Reverse cultural Reverse appropriation. cultural appropriation. Okay, we're gonna eat rocks. You know, it's really cool to see all the ancient stuff in Beijing that's the crux of Chinese culture and therefore affecting our lives today as Asian Americans. But it's also cool to check out all the trendy spots that people our age go to. This younger generation of kids in China are more up to date with global culture than any era before them. So yes, I am a little interested to see the spots that they frequent. I'm with Daniel and Theo, they're friends from the States that moved to Beijing to start their own production company and essentially make it in the motherland. Yo, I'm ready to see some food I've never seen before. Yo, what's going on everybody? I'm in Beijing right now and it is super, super cold. And Beijing is known for a few things. Most notably, it's known for the Great Wall, the Forbidden City, it being the capital and also Peking Duck. People come to Beijing, one of the things that they don't really tend to think about are all the trendy, hipster, late night spots to eat at. So I'm here with my good friends and my Beijing connects, Daniel and Theo. All right, we're about to check out some really cool late night spots to eat at. They're all different varieties of Chinese food. They have different kind of interior decors. To all you fans out there that have been keeping up, last year with Dave and Andrew were here, we eating scorpions and stuff. It was not a good look. I was threw up. <laughs> so it's definitely good to eat some real food right now that human beings eat. You guys ready? Let's do it. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, yo, Daniel. I'm mad hungry, man. Where are we headed? All right, so to start off our uh, Beijing late night food crawl, we're gonna hit up Trinley's Food Company first. That's, that's, if you look at the door, it looks like a doctor's office. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to get my teeth extracted there. So hipster. All right, yo. This spot's pretty cool. Check out the bathroom. First of all, it's a really short door. Bomb. Look at all those rolls of toilet paper. And it's a squatter. About to get my Asian squat on. It's like really well lit. It's kind of trying to feel like a locker room or like a cellar. It's kind of like that late 80s, early 90s, like young and dangerous feel. And I feel like I'm, I'm at home again. Even though I've never lived in Hong Kong. I feel like this restaurant is, you know, in that space of Instagram driven no. spaces. Uh, the way that they're taking on like English, whether like your visit is over or kind of random words that they're throwing out there, I like it because it's kind of taking English not very seriously, yeah. which is what English people, you know, Americans do to other languages. It's not yeah, taken yeah. very seriously. Reverse cultural Reverse appropriation. Reverse cultural appropriation. Dude, the chip bowl is hipster. So we're eating breakfast food. It's kind of like when you go to like a late night spot, go to Denny's, right? You, get, you probably want like a Grand Slam or something. It's similar to that. Great fried bread with me. It's, it's not as fried as how a, a yo tao typically is. Yeah. This is very heavy. Pork spare ribs, known as pie what? Oh, this is braised, this is oh, fried. Half, half. North, south. And it's got this dry rub out there. Oh. That's a very northern element. Because I think Cantonese people will never put this chili powder. An apricot flavored spare rib. It's better. Isn't that bad? Isn't that bad? Look how clean that is. Yo, southern. Yo, southern winds, man. Southern hey. winds. Salt and pepper fried udon. Now let's see what the, how they flipped it. Maybe they tied in some northern influences. That's it's butter. really buttery. Yeah. The egg really comes through too. You know what I feel like was more northern or oh, Sichuan? Yeah. Was that little red chili pepper oh, yeah, right here. Pepper. Sometimes Cantonese food is known to be very light, but they flipped it. They added a little bit more kick to it, and I really appreciate that. It's a little too buttery for me. He's like, he's like, he's like crab dinner on a but, Friday. But it's because you're not drunk yet. Maybe, yeah. On to the next spot. All right, yo, Daniel, Theo, real quick. Behind me is a legendary spot. And I know David, when talking about his days in Beijing, he always <laughs> talks about the spot Bellagio. When I first went to Beijing, it was really cold. And, uh, you know, I hit up David. He goes, let's go to the club. We decided to go eat because we weren't scoring with the honeys. You know, I mean, he goes, <laughs> I got the spot for you. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know about this Beijing stuff. What do these? He goes, no, it's it's real Cantonese. I see you there. That's what he said. We were like, this I'm like, oh, I'm down. So we went there <laughs> and we went we with this spot. That was our first dinner. It was it was candlelit. It was, so so, it was so David candlelit. showed you the Bellagio. Yeah, he did. He did. All right. I think there's probably a bunch of Chinese people who who knew this Bellagio first and then went to Vegas <laughs> oh. and was like, where's where's the char siu? <laughs> Yeah. 
All right, Daniel, this next spot you told me is at the top. It's one of the staples of the late night routine of all the cool kids. What is it? This is a classic. It's called San Yang Cai. Uh, in English, it's called the Three Delicious. Terrible English, by the way. Uh, <laughs> located right in the middle of Worker Stadium. Okay, we're gonna eat rocks. Something like that. Okay. <laughs> rocks omelet, I'm feeling it. Yo, I've never seen that. Oh my God, he's scrambling the eggs. Scrambling the eggs on. I've never seen that before. That is very interesting. It's almost like you're gonna eat the rocks with the eggs. Yeah, you, almost, you might mistakenly crack a tooth. That was the most lit way to cook eggs. It's a pretty nice rock, too. <laughs> Who can pick up first, a rock first? One. Oh, no, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a race. Three, two, one. Oh, shit. Oh, and you just... <laughs> Number one. But do the eggs taste any different after they've been cooked by rocks? I feel like they taste more rugged. I can't taste the rocks, but it's good. <laughs> this is Sichuan mm. Lazi. So it's like a popcorn chicken, except super spicy. That chicken's that chicken. good. That chicken's really good, man. This has bones in it, so it's definitely not as easy to eat. Yeah. Way more flavor, though. The Sun Tang Fei Nu. Oh, the sour soup. The sour soup beef. Yo, look at these peppercorns. You thought they were small little grapes or something. Look at this broth, it's like green, it's yellow. I really like that. Like it? No, I like that. I almost like that as the base, and I'm gonna eat everything around that. Grilled eel done Sichuan style. Wow. Does uh, it keep the bone in? It's kind of hard. It's bone in, it's bone in, it's fried first, and then it's second fried mm -hmm. with the chili pepper. Why the heck do Chinese like eating a bunch of little bones? I think they like the, the, the activity of picking something out of their mouth. Oh, that eel's good. And you know why I think people like to come here after the club? It's kind of a fun thing to do because you get this big plate and actually there's not that much meat in there so it's a little bit deceiving, but there's all these little pieces of meat that you have to search for. Oh, look what I found, oh. I, I got a garlic. And you have showed us a lot of new food so far. Y'all, I think we gotta move on to the next late night spot. This is Fontuan. I love Fontuan because uh, it's actually a little bit sweet. It's a little bit salty. It's a little bit, uh, has a little bit of that pickled flavor. And it's like a rice burrito. Yeah, true. And then the rice itself is really good. I like the way the Taiwanese, you know, their rice is really good. It has a Taiwanese sausage taste. Oh yeah, with the egg, with the pickles. Not too much rice, just enough. Mm. Yeah. I have seen you guys on the YouTube channel. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my name is Kevin and I study in NYU. Yeah, this place is a very famous bre breakfast spot in Beijing. On the menu is called an Asian sandwich. It's actually a Xiaobing sandwich. So it's the outside, it's uh, instead of buns, you get a Xiaobing. And uh, Xiaobing is what? It's like a kind of a hard biscuit. Like a crispy biscuit, right? Oh. The Xiaobing is actually, I'm not gonna lie, it's very dry. I hope we have some water on the side. Up next, we have the, the savory tofu. And this is real savory because look, you even have little dried shrimp in there too. Does it remind you of the northern savory? No, no, it's completely different. Oh, because it's got pork song in it. Ah. First of all, the tofu would be a, a little bit harder than this. Okay. Yeah, and it would have more pride, huh? <laughs> it's more like a sweet tofu dish. Uh, it has some like nuts. These are peanuts, but I think they've been soaking in and some syrup, okay? Yeah. So they look a little bit different. They look very moist. Oh, this is pretty good. It's so like smooth. So smooth as balls. <laughs> How smooth is that tofu? <laughs> the added nuts, definitely peanuts. It, it kind of tastes like the steamed peanuts you would get 
Um, I don't know why they're so big out here. Uh... <laughs> So after you've eaten all that, you gotta come to this place that visually just looks really, really cool. It almost looks, what, magical? R romantic if you're taking a date here. The movie Bubble Boy. We're about to be that. Okay, <laughs> let's go inside the bubble. Let's check out this spot. This spot is called Tansians. Tansians. And usually, it's they actually just closed and they're not serving food anymore. Yeah. But their desserts are great. Variety. What? How'd you read that? <laughs> Variety. That's his friend. Variety. Pem. I don't know, but oh, this yeah. is pretty cool. This is a, I've never seen a dessert like this where it was like orange on top, white on the bottom. I, I like grapefruits, so I like the bitterness of it. Yeah. That's pretty good. Relijus. Relijus and chocolate. So it's almost $10. That is a pretty expensive dessert, but it is really high quality. And I would say to eat it in a bubble, I'd say it's worth it. Shout out to the bubbles. Shout out to the bubbles. I mean, I would say a lot of people would like to party in a bubble. Or live in a bubble. All right, everybody, that wraps it up for our late night, trendy Beijing food crawl. Uh, you can see from the places that we went to that Beijing has a wide variety of things to try. Eggs cooked on rocks. Eggs on rocks. Thank you for watching that video. And in the comments below, let us know if there's any other cool spots even around the world, or in any cities that you wouldn't expect there to be spots like that. And until next time, we are in the Jing. I'm out. Peace. We're in Beijing. One of the cool things about China is their ride sharing service. And I'm, ta I'm not talking about cars, I'm talking about bicycles. Daniel, we are in front of just one randomly parked bike. Okay, there's a couple big brands, Mobike. Mobike, Ofo. Ofo. So this is not like a city bike where you have to park it at certain stations. Yeah, you can park it wherever. You can see this lock right here is basically a, um, it's a smart lock. And it's location tracked. It's powered actually. It's powered, like right here you see a, there's a solar panel. The idea is you open up the, the uh, app and it actually gives you a real time tracking of like all the bikes near you. You put on a lock and it takes you to a QR scanner. Wow. In front of the bike and the back, there's two QR codes that you can scan. You scan it. It's unlocking. Oh, there it is. It just unlocked. You pay about one RMB an hour, but now like they've even introduced like a monthly card. You pay two or three RMB for it. Three RMB is like about 50 cents. Yeah, to ride American. as many as you want. Just think about how many Chinese people there are. You know, I think the analogy was always like, if you can make a dollar, what, a off, dollar off of every Chinese person in the world, you'd be like a trillionaire. All right, man, I'm hopping on the Mo bike. Dude, I'm riding a bike this time. The kickstand. The kickstand! Yo! Another one of the cool things in China. Another convenient thing that you don't think about is WeChat. You can find a girlfriend, which is true. You can pay other people. You can pay at the convenience store. You can even pay at restaurants. Yeah, you can pay on the street food vendor. Right here we have the, uh, the bill from the restaurant. What we do is we open up WeChat, and then on top right, you know, there's a drop-down box. Here we go, we have a scan QR code. So all you're gonna do is scan this QR code. Yes. And then you're gonna pay for the bill. Yeah, so we can scan the QR code. Tells you, okay, so the amount to pay, is 5.78. Beautiful, confirm payment. We just pay and we can pay now. And then it just requires your thumb ID. And boom, you're done. WeChat, convenience. Thank you for watching that video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'm so excited to be back in Beijing. This is my first day in Beijing. I want to give a big shout out to Vision Global Wi Fi for providing us these Wi Fi devices, allowing us to get Wi Fi everywhere we go so we don't have to worry and rely on our SIM card situation, which can get kind of messy when you're traveling overseas. And until next time, I'm out.